Hey everyone, welcome back to The Resilient Pod, the podcast helping you become resilient in our world full of disruptions. You're here with me, your host, Reen Singh. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Now, are you a business continuity or resilience professional feeling tired, burnt out and just overwhelmed by dealing with not only this pandemic, but other incidents and crisis in your organisation? In the past 24 months, have you taken an actual break? Now, I don't mean being off call and working or working in between your breasts. I mean, actually time away from work to relax. Are you feeling burnt out and forgotten and not sure what to do? Well, I've got you covered because today's episode, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into burnout for our resilience professionals and what you can do to really make a change in the right direction. Why? Because we deserve it. And to discuss this very thing, I am joined with my next guest, a seasoned and certified business continuity professional with over 17 years experience in an array of resilience disciplines. Through his diverse repertoire, he has been instrumental in conducting, for example, ISO 22301 audits, pandemic planning, facility and even country resilience planning along the way, making the work we do really meaningful this is so important he appreciates and sees the need for looking after our resilience professionals and I'm so excited to dig more deeper into this forgotten topic with him so without further ado introducing you to our very next guest Samir Makwana from India welcome thank you Rina thank you how it's a are you pleasure doing? to be on resiliency podcast you are welcome. Now, this very topic that I've just mentioned and burnout is really insightful. And I'm really excited to dwell deeper into this because I feel it's really important. But before we get into it, what does being burnt out mean? So, Rina, uh, you know, workplace burnout is more than mere tiredness. It just goes beyond the ordinary stress of everyday work. It is characterized by chronic exhaustion mm -hmm. and this undying feeling of frustration. And you emotionally withdraw from work and in time, your productivity declines. Um, you know, with the uh, technology always keeping us in touch with our jobs, it can even blur the lines between work and private lives. Then frustration dominates your emotions and you kind of have no capacity to solve your problems and you cannot see anything in the right perspective. If this is happening to any of us, we're on the road leading to burnout. Wow, I think it's really important to understand what that means. And I like the fact that you've said it's not just about being tired, it's a bit more to that and actually recognizing it, which is really important. So guys, if you are listening or watching us, just take note of that and give yourself a little check in to see if you are feeling this. Now, Samir, resilience teams are probably more burnt out than other teams, but often we don't realize this. Why do you think that is? Uh, so, Rina, most organizations, they have a dedicated business continuity team for their locations and yeah. regions. However, the strength of their BCP team may be insufficient to manage the business continuity program of a large organization. And as a consequence, you know, the business continuity professionals in these organizations, they have a grueling schedule mm -hmm. and they are busy interminably leading to cumulative stress. And this cumulative stress then puts you on the road to burnout. Wow, something that we often forget, isn't it? Because we we as professionals, um, any professional, but spe specifically resilience professionals are in the thick of it all the time and often forgotten. Can you give me a bit, uh, an example of when this might happen? Um, definitely. Um, you know, something like this could occur because your resiliency team is burned out. When your business resiliency professionals, they interact with their peers in mm. other organizations and they observe certain best practices, they will be disinclined to propose 
those best practices to their management because they will be feeling this will be just another task to my already burdened shoulders why should i propose this and you know uplift my business continuity program i'm so tired i don't have the intonation to do this and this is a dangerous scenario reen i'm sure you agree Absolutely. And you know what? Hands on heart. I've been through that. I've seen, uh, I've experienced it. I've seen others in organizations I've worked for experience it. It's it's not theory. It's actually true, isn't it? Which is really interesting. Yes, it is. Yeah. And, you know, it leads me to my next question and to really get a sense of how important this is. What is the impact of burnout for us as resilience professionals, not just the other, like Mm. the rest of the workforce, but I want to really emphasize this. uh, If you are listening to us or watching us, that it's Samir, I'm asking Samir this question based on what it is for us working in that really high pressured environment. You know, Rina, there can be two major impacts. Mm -hmm. It can impact you as a resiliency professional personally, because burnout will become your implacable enemy Mm. and you won't be able to treat it. And the second impact is going to be obviously on the organization you work for because, um, you know, the organization's resiliency plan is going to become out of date and after a while it will become an obsolete plan. And uh, such an obsolete plan will never assist an organization to bounce back after any crisis. And just see how it is going to have a major impact when regulators, external auditors come to your organization and they review your business continuity program and they find that it is absolutely out of date because your team is not investing any time in proposing leading industry practices. And all of this out-of-date, obsolete data is going to become conspicuous to others Mm -hmm. and embarrassing to you. And even, let's assume there is no regulator coming, there is no external audit happening. If you are, as an organization, dealing with multiple crises all at the same time, you will not be able to do it competently because your plan is not just in line with leading industry practices. So it's a recipe for failure. So you see, burnout impacts you as an individual, but it also impacts the organization. We don't want that to happen at all. No, and wow, so powerful. And I feel we forget this, that it's it's obviously it's related to people and, and you know people drive the business, but it actually affects the organization too. And a, a question for those who are listening or watching us. Have you actually considered this? And do you feel or have you ever felt that it's burnout of your people is impacting the resiliency of your business? Let us know, um, because I'd be really interested to hear this. And I, I just can't believe it. I, you know, hearing it from somebody else is, is always, it just has that impact. Moving on from that, Samir, what, and this is a really crucial point, we've understood like what being burnt out means, why we are, um, why as resilience teams, we're probably more burnt out, you've given us an example, the impact, but what should resilience professionals, such as business continuity managers, do if they feel burnt out? Should they carry on and be brave or speak out and tell someone? Now, a lot of people ask me this question, (laughs) Rina. And, you know, asking this question to business continuity professionals is a very good thing because we as business continuity professionals, you and I, we talk so much about resiliency. Mm -hmm. We want to create a culture where people live and breathe business continuity within organizations. But when they feel overworked as an individual, as an employee, as a professional, I think the right approaches to talk to your immediate managers if you feel overworked and we must not underestimate the power of the conversation Mm -hmm. we'll be surprised with how much of support we may receive only if we begin to talk about it to our respective managers because i believe that senior management today is very competent 
they are aware about the kind of problems employees mm -hmm. face. So if a business continuity professional who is running the resiliency show in the company goes and talks to his manager, his senior management about how he's overworked, obviously they will get some support. And um, yeah, and Rina, you know, this pandemic in which we are currently, it has anyways aggravated the health crisis. Yeah. So as a business continuity professional, they have to deal with the continuity of operations in the pandemic. They have to make those regular phone calls and check with the critical employees in the company. Are you doing okay? Yeah. They have to make a contingency plan for the people who may be affected with the pandemic. So they have to do all of these things. But I think it's time that someone pause and ask them, how are you doing? Powerful. I, I want to throw this question back to those of you who are listening or watching. Has anybody asked you how you're doing? And not just, hey, how are you doing? You're like, fine. No, how are you really coping with all this stuff that's going on because let's face it i know uh, we pandemic stuff is everywhere and then we're 24 months in blah 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 but it's still a, a big impact because a lot of us haven't had that break and we're still feeling burnt out and going on and so is anybody asking you that and if not why not i feel we i guess uh, being a practitioner samir no one's asked me this i i will be honest in like where I work or in other areas no one said to me oh how are you doing as a BC professional as a resilience professional are you okay do you need time off I don't feel anyone's asked that and I want to know if people are asking their teams and actually thinking about that because I think that's often forgotten isn't it now some of us might not feel comfortable saying oh we're struggling because it looks like oh, they're not coping, um, the, the boundaries are not there at work. How can we overcome that? Because some people feel a bit embarrassed to say this as well. Like, what do you suggest we do about that? Right. So, you know, Arena, before I just answer that question directly, I wanted to make a very pertinent uh, observation. Like, you know, since we've spoken about the burnout in the pandemic as individuals, let's say during the pandemic, I'm sure, you know, business resiliency professionals have dealt with so many crises, even yeah. in the last 24 months. We've had cyclones and hurricanes and, you know, uh, power cuts and prolonged power outages and what have you. Yeah. So when, let's say a cyclone comes, you know, the business continuity professionals have to put all their pandemic preparedness and all their routine exercises on hold. And they need to just divert all their effort and energy towards the cyclone. And eventually what happens, everything that they do on a routine basis starts piling up. Mm. And then when the cyclone is over, they need to start again from the bottom of the stack. So, you know, my, my point is all our routine activities as BCP professionals, be it, you know, internal audit, engaging with vendors, coordinating with our senior management is going to be perennial. Yeah. But now is the time to check on the health both physical and mental of the resiliency professionals we have to make concerted effort in this direction because we have to use this crisis and emerge from this crisis with both healthier employees healthier bcp professionals and better healthier organizations absolutely agree and we owe it to ourselves and our organizations to notice that we're feeling this way and speak up, up speak up about it and draw the boundaries because if we're spending our whole day job saying you need to be resilient to our stakeholders and we're not doing it ourselves where's the where's the kind of capability where's the authority where's the where is that value that you're saying to everybody else how are you living that so that's really important um, and a very pertinent point you made about work piling up yes you know I, I believe during this time the, la the last 24 months people haven't been taking leave because if they take leave they're going to come back to a thousand emails hundreds of emails more work to do that's why and that's what's making them burnt out my opinion is well there's always going to be work it's never going to finish what would you have to say about that 
Definitely, there's always going to be work. It's never going to be finished. So what I, uh, you know, advocate uh, very strongly is try to prioritize. Mm -hmm. That is the key for all of us. You know, Rina, if we don't prioritize, we are never going to be able to do the most important things as resiliency professionals. So we have a cyclone. We have to, you know, put all our efforts yeah. there and then, you know, make a very definite and structured plan to do the rest of the activities. And um, that is important. We have to prioritize as resiliency professionals. Only then we'll be able to deal with burnout because you and I are only gifted with 24 hours. We won't get 25 because we are in the business continuity profession, you know? Yeah. So we have to make best of our 24. Yeah, absolutely. And even in those 24 hours, we're not working and we've got our personal lives to deal with too. And in these things like Cyclone, you're thinking about, well, how am I going to protect my family? Forget work as well. So there's, I mean, we could talk about this in a different episode, but that's really important. And I feel what you said as what us as pr practitioners should do, they're so simple. And I think often people overcomplicate things and think, oh, well, to, to kind of identify that we're struggling we're going to have to do all these complicated things but what you've said is actually doable because we do this every day we help people prioritize our stakeholders prioritize we pick up what's most important so we need to do it for ourselves exactly and i'm 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 very impressed with your honesty you said no one's asked me how i have been doing so i think you know we need to now create this trend of us as business continuity professionals, asking other business continuity professionals how you're doing. If no one's asking, let us as professionals of this practice within the industry, let us you know, start this trend. Let us talk to our peers and you know, assure them that we as an industry of professionals are available for each other. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I agree with that because we've got to look out for each other. And this is a time to make a stance to say our organizations need to care about the resiliency professionals too. You know, you could do things like having backups of people, but like you said, there's sometimes in organizations there's only one person <laughs> doing it, right? And so they might not have a backup, which kind of moving on from the from that, it I want to ask you, well, what should our senior managers be doing? Because there's a responsibility there too. I'm the practitioner. Say you're my manager. I've identified this. I felt brave to tell you. What are you going to do about it as a senior manager now? Yeah, definitely. I should not just, um, you know, tell you, Rina, good job. You've come and told me. <laughs> well, I'm very happy you've expressed your problem. Yeah. But, you know, we've got these five things lined up. When are you going to complete that? Yeah. We don't want to hear that, you know. You want to hear some practical and you know very concrete steps that they will they will you know uh, do to help you basically so i think bcp heads and you know senior management today is very competent as i said earlier yeah. so they should you know make an effort to check if the business continuity teams are having sufficient backups and uh, today we don't really increase our headcount and get backups and create you know multiple roles within the organization if that's not possible because we have to be cognizant of their challenges too so we need to you know look at ways how we can hire maybe contract workers to do some projects for us and then you know uh, their contract can cease to exist uh, make best use of external consultants because consultants come with a very good uh, knowledge of the concepts and they can be an extended arm of your business continuity professionals so all the routine activities like completing BIAs, completing your matrix, all of those routine tasks can be done by some external consultant. And your core business resiliency professional can focus on bringing in leading industry practices, upgrading your program, making sure that regulatory requirements are met to the best of their ability. And most importantly, uh, senior management should ensure that all the other leaders in the organization take business continuity seriously yeah. because if that culture gets created then every senior management will have dedicated role to play in the resiliency program and that will help the business continuity professional in that organization to do his job with great ease because he knows that he has a lot of support from all other leaders in the organization so you know that's that's the way forward. Not only acknowledge your problem, but give you more hands. 
get you consultants, get you external contract workers who can just do basic jobs for you and create a culture in the organization where other leaders also take business continuity seriously and give it the respect it deserves. So true. And that's so vital there. And I like the suggestions you've given it to kind of outsource some of that work. But I'm going to challenge you on this one, because I know um, a lot of us will have budgetary constraints and might not be in that position in that organization where we could just offload some of the work uh, to a contractor because of the cost element. If we're not in that pr pr privileged position, what can we do? Definitely. So, uh, Rina, you know, uh, I just want to say one thing. Um, we need to do a good cost benefit analysis. Okay. If you are going to have burnt out business resiliency professionals, remember, it's going to impact the entire program. It's going to become out of date and obsolete. And then your regulators, your external auditors are going to be unsparing in their attack of you. So if you don't want that, you can remove some of your budget to get some external support. And it can be really junior resources, but it can be those resources that will support the business continuity professionals and um, do all the small jobs for you. And consultants, I would say they have good amount of knowledge, business continuity, external consultants, they will also have good knowledge. And if you bring an external person to your team, they will be able to tell you things that perhaps your own team you know, might be reluctant to express. So there is a lot of benefit in doing this, but you just remember at the end of the day, you don't want your program to become obsolete because you have burnt out employees. Yeah, that's a very vital point there. And I like that you say that, you know, you can bring in resources who might not be as senior or junior to help you do some of the, the ad, like say like admin stuff, right? Because we spend a lot of time doing admin as well, like someone to help you to do that. And actually, just while you were saying like consultants could do that, even someone who's willing to learn and take on a bit more of a challenge um, or responsibility who wants to work their way up in an organization could help you internally as well to uh, if they were kind of in this pandemic they didn't have much to do they were furloughed or whatever they could help do that and up train them um, which is also interesting as something that we should think about um, I know for a fact that there will be that question oh well I have to go and train someone now I'm burnt out as a resilience professional now I have to train someone to help me that's even more stress um, it's going to take even more time I'm saying that because I've experienced it you know I've got some help but then I've spent more time training them and it's just like oh what's the point but actually the what you say about the cost benefit of it and not letting the program become obsolete is so powerful really impactful there Right. And you know, Rina, today, regulators, external auditors are interested in knowing your business resiliency program because the pandemic has been, you know, an eye opener for even the regulators. They want to know how you've succeeded and they want to know what things you didn't do right. So you don't want to give anybody an opportunity to see, you know, all the glaring issues into your program. So might as well just get external help, get some qualified consultants on board and let them do the routine job for you and let your team focus on upgrading, uplifting and making your plan just in line with leading industry practices. I love that. I think it's really important. And do you know what I really like about what you said is you haven't said as senior managers, we will just put your staff on a webinar for health and well-being or burnt out course, because that's what people are doing. And, you know, going on a webinar, is not good enough to help manage that thing. So you've actually given us some actual practical things to help the people um, rather than fob the responsibility off onto something else, which may or may not work. These should be complementary, right? Exactly. And, um, you know, I, I would say one thing, when we talk about business continuity, it's all about backups, mm -hmm. having the right set exactly. of people to do, you know, multiple jobs. So if you as a business continuity professional have no backup imagine the state of your program if something happens to rena and rena is the only person in the organization handling business continuity it's going to be a shame if something happens to her and there is no backup so you know might as well use uh, the backups call them alternates have an alternate to your business continuity professional as well if something happens to him if they have to take care of 
some emergency in their family, you have somebody else, an external contract worker, consultant, who can play the role of that business resiliency professional and help you in your organization. So this will only ameliorate the situation of your own teams. They will get sufficient time to implement and propose leading industry practices. And eventually they will see that you are making a concerted effort. And that is also a good medicine for them to heal from their burnout when they see somebody is taking an interest in their problem. Yeah, and actually doing something about it that's going to help in the long term. And I absolutely love that. And I find that it's a challenge for many organizations. And, and that's why many of us in the industry are feeling that burnout, as you said. And it's a real eye opener and something that we really must do. Um, wow, <laughs> is all I can say to that. Um, it's been such an eye opener, everything you've said. Do you, before we kind of close off this, because I know we could probably speak about it for a very long time, is there any final closing thoughts you have for our audience from our chat? Yeah, definitely. I would like to, you know, make three pertinent suggestions. Mm -hmm. If you are suffering from work-related burnout, it's time to speak about it to your respective managers. And you'll be surprised at how wonderfully they will respond and they might give you some practical help as well. Uh, if you are a senior manager, uh, you know, part of the senior management, then make it a point to have, uh, you know, external uh, help, contingency workers, or maybe hire external consultants who will take care of some of the business continuity related tasks and give you a better perspective on what's right and what's wrong. Because even external consultants come with a lot of exposure to how the peers are performing. And most importantly, uh, you know, deal with the crisis of burnout and respond to this crisis of burnout with the same clarity that you would do to any other crisis in your organization, like a flood or a cyclone. So respond with the same speed and give your team the support they need, because even your own business continuity professionals in your organization, they also need someone to ask them, how are you doing? love that thank you so much Samir for coming on the resilience pod and just sharing this and opening our eye to this very important topic thank you so much uh guys let me know what you've thought if you have been watching or listening to this some powerful stuff we have discussed and if you want to find out more if you want to you know continue the conversation then don't feel free to get in touch with me or Samir and tell us what you think and what your organization is doing for it. If they're doing a really fantastic job or you as a, a professional or your manager has been uh, really supportive in this and what they've done, tell us, let's see what's worked because resilient people, including our resilience professionals equals resilient business. That's it from me, your host, Rina Singh, with our guest, Samir Makwana from India. Until next time, keep on investing in your resilience.